Hi, everybody. Thank you, Ray. And I'm glad to be at Holly Hill. My day job is I work with uh, about 41 people who are educators in some capacity, and I work with about 700 health food stores in nine states. And my night job is to give consumer talks, and I'm on the radio. I was on the radio in Pittsburgh today. I'm in Philadelphia today. I have a handout that's sitting uh, at the bottom of where you're sitting that I will loosely be running through to give you an idea. To me, the purpose of the handout is that you almost have a little bit of a book to go home and look at and think about, and you can remember some things. And if you don't want to look at it now, that's fine. And uh, if you want to make notes, <coughs> make notes, there's a little bit of room there to make notes. It's a double-sided piece of paper. In addition, um, you have compliments of Earth Farm in your bag, a little breath tonic. So um, it's a, a fun uh, USDA certified organic breath tonic. And it is excellent because all the herbs in there will work to keep the bacteria low in your mouth. If you use the breath tonic during cold and flu season when everybody's coughing, it actually is an excellent thing to be using this breath tonic on a regular basis. So a little bit of a present for you. I'll introduce myself in one second, but I wanted to say that the, the topic that we presented to you today is herbal liquid extracts for optimal health. So for me, I, I really like to know my audience a little bit. So I want to play a little game, and you don't have to play if you don't want, because I'm not counting. Come on in. Uh, I'm not counting who is raising their hands, but this will be a one-time raise your hand question. So the question is going to be this. On a scale of one to 10, how fluent do you think that you are with herbs? Meaning that if, when I say one, and you think you know a lot, hold your hand and raise your hand when I say five. If you think you know almost nothing about herbs when I say one, raise your hand when I say one. And when I go through one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to get a good idea as to my, who my audience is. So you got it? It's going to be one I know very little about herbs, five I know a fair amount about herbs. So we'll do one. Beautiful. Welcome. Two. Excellent. I, I love the learning process. Three. Uh, there's people in the middle. I love them. Like me, kind of. Four. Beautiful. Got a couple fours. Five. Okay. I would give myself a three, but maybe my three is a little bit different than yours. Um, my name is Michael Hennessy. I am from, actually, Philadelphia. Grew up at Coffin in the Boulevard in Northeast Philly. Went to Father Judge High School. Went to Georgetown University on a scholarship. Graduated in 1981 and couldn't get a job. I know a lot of people who are experiencing that now. My friend said, come on, college boy. Come work in a health food store for a little while. I was a Hormel chili eating college person who drank beer every night. Grew up in an Irish Catholic family with meat and potatoes two vegetables, steak when we felt like we had a little bit of money. So I think you know who I am. I've been doing this for 33 years. I uh, managed health food stores like Holly Hill for 18 years. And for the last 13 years, I've had my own private company where I do consulting for nutritional supplement companies and natural body care companies. So my mission, day job and night job, is to educate people. And what I feel I do is I educate the people who educate you. I like to consider myself a teacher of the teachers. And as a teacher of the teachers, I have probably spent over 20 hours a week for the last two weeks reading about herbs. Not for this presentation, I'm writing an article on trees and the benefits of medicine that we get from trees. And I have been digging really deeply into trees of the Amazon and, 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 and what happened with trees in American history and with North American and South American history and how we got a lot of medicines from the trees that are on our two continents, North and South America. It's often been said that 72% of all the pharmaceutical drugs that are manufactured have been started with plants. And it's amazing that a high percentage of those come from trees. Now the thing that interests me about trees is that a tree is your ultimate sustainable living thing. We are beautiful, I'm 55 years old, and I'm gonna ask you your age. I will die, we will all die. We are not that sustainable compared to other things like trees. Trees, given the opportunity, can live hundreds and hundreds of years. As you probably know, one of the oldest trees available in the world is the ginkgo tree. So who found out that ginkgo leaves were good to get oxygen to the brain to help somebody to think more and possibly to, to increase the circulatory system of the brain and possibly help us to be able to think longer, clearer, better as we get age, as we age. That's an amazing thing. Right now, they say that there are hundreds of cancer-causing drugs that are in the Amazon rainforest. 
which we're cutting down as one of the fastest things we've ever did done as humanity. We are just destroying the place where the World Cup is at this week. The amount of trees that they destroyed for the arrogance of humans to have a game for rich people to fly there for three weeks is really, really sad because some of those stadiums will never be used again. Trees. My life is about nature, it's about natural medicine, it's about herbs and what we can do. So our conversation today is herbal liquid extracts for optimal health. What I want to do today is to maybe open up your mind. I have a deliberate focus and, and Ray and the good people at Holly Hill know what I want to do today. I want to talk to you a little bit about why you would want to take a product in a liquid herb extract. As such, I am not here to tell you to take a product. I'm here to tell you to look at herbs a little bit differently. My intention today is to have you say, when I go to buy a product that is an herb, I am now a more informed consumer because I went to that talk because Holly Hill is often, often offering talks for us where we can learn things. My hope today is that you will see, come on out here if you want, uh, you, will, you will see new ways to look at herbs as you look at them. But this talk is not today about herbs, it's not about herb farm, it's not about trees. To me, this talk today is about you. So I know in the greater Philadelphia area, we've got a million people. And I'm fighting against the NBA draft tonight. I'm fighting against Cole Hamels being on the mound. I'm fighting against a beautiful day after some rain. You are here for a reason. And I honor you because you want to learn more about your health. So my whole life is going to health food stores. I don't live in the real world at all. I mean, so my mom shops at Acme. I don't know what you have up here. I know you have a store right next door. I bought less than $200 in a regular grocery store in 33 years. All of my life is about spending in a health food store. I walk into a health food store, I meet these beautiful people who are here to help you. And their lives are dedicated. They don't make a lot of money often, but they're here to help you, as Ray just said. I think that's really amazing. So today I want to say, and this talk is about you, because I want you to know that when you want to do something for your health, and you're forking out a little bit of money that you're understanding the quality of the herb really matters. It is not about herb farm. They are the number one selling liquid herb extract in the United States. But it's really the definitive question that you have to ask every time you go to buy a product. I want to explain a little bit about the different ways that you can buy herbs, an educational thing. And I'm going to guess that most of you don't know the differentiating points here. I want to talk a little bit about some herbs and why it is that certain parts of the plants and how they're harvested and how they're presented makes them work well. A question I often ask during cold and flu season is, did anybody in the room ever take echinacea in their life? Anybody here taking echinacea? Okay, well I found, I mean, first of all, just so you know, with echinacea, 12 years ago, it was the hottest selling herb in the United States. We had almost, I would suggest, deliberate attempts to show with the talking heads on TV at the six o'clock news, with about four or five misdone studies, that echinacea doesn't work with our bodies, with our minds, with our spirit, we are affected every day by the placebo effect. You just see once that something says that something is bad and you've just put doubt into your head. You see something three times on the news over a year and a half, whether the studies were repudiated within a couple days, you believe that the thing is no longer any good. Anybody here take fish oil, omega-3 fish oil or omega-3 is in any capacity? Okay, we have a deliberate attempt again, I would say, where we had a really horrible study about omega-3s and prostate, uh, prostate cancer for men last December. Uh, I'm now on the selling and big business side of this industry. You wouldn't believe how sales went down with men. One study on TV, character assassination. Little do people know that if you did a PubMed search, you'd find that there are hundreds of studies that says that omega-3s are really good for prostate study. Little do you know that in, in Europe, Echinacea is one of the most used herbs, end of conversation. If you get bit by a snake, you go to the hospital, intravenous uh, echinacea. Echinacea has been, is one of the most studied herbs in the world in Europe. Now again, for those people a little bit savvy, it's really cool because echinacea is an herb from the United States. It's an herb that the American Indians showed to the settlers when they came over here. It was, it was the number one selling herb by every pharmaceutical drug from like 1890 to 1910. 
Eli Lilly, every major pharmaceutical drug ca carried echinacea and said that echinacea was the was the was the it thing. And then along comes uh, the the miracle drug penicillin, and we get uh, different pharmaceutical drugs that make echinacea seem like it's not going to be as strong as the powerful pharmaceuticals. And all of a sudden, echinacea disappeared until 1965. About it was grown ornamentally. Ed Smith, who started Earth Farm was the guy who brought echinacea back to the United States. He found an herbalist, a Swiss herbalist named uh, Dr. A. Vogel. I, I forget what A stands for. Dr. Vogel, Vogel was a Swiss-German herbalist. Uh, the German pharma pharmacopoeia really kept herbs alive. And he said to Ed, this is your plant, and nobody uses it in the United States. We had what we will call an herbal renaissance in the 1970s to the 1990s. And I got into the natural foods industry during the herbal renaissance. I love herbs. I think that herbs can be your herbal medicine cabinet for almost anything that you need to do. Again, so the question comes down to, do I want to study herbs? You're here tonight. Congratulations. Do I have faith in herbs? So people tell me, I took echinacea and it didn't work anymore. I took echinacea and I was told that it wasn't good long term. A complete myth, completely not true. I want to talk a little bit today about echinacea and what an overall multitasking herb it is. And the truth of the matter is, if you're looking for herbal medicine, herbal medicine is amazingly multitasking. If you're a religious person, we can say thank you God for the Garden of Eden that we came into because so many of these herbs do many things. Uh, I'm writing an article, another article right now, and um, I, I make the assumption that you hear people say, that herb is poisonous. Was, uh, the article is about Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah, some herbs in some dosages can be poisonous. And yes, carrots and carrot juice, if you take too much carrots, can be poisonous. But where does our brain draw the line in saying there's no such thing as a non-poisonous pharmaceutical? Now, why do I say that? Because a pharmaceutical really has a hard time getting through the liver. And my mom's taking eight pills now. She never took any medicine. She's taking eight pills. The average person over the age of 65 has 15 prescriptions in the United States. Most of them are not filled. Nobody's ever looked at an aging liver. Nobody's ever looked at an aging metabolism or an aging nervous system or an aging endocrine system. But I'll tell you what, if they did, common sense says, I'm not dumb. Common sense says that there are problems with that drug because it is a single bullet theory. It's supposed to go in and do one thing. So therefore, the liver is hurt. The kidneys are hurt. Fish oil is an incredible blood thinner. People are taking blood thinners when they reach 65. Hi, doc. Hey, how you doing? Here's your blood thinner uh, prescription. Take it for the rest of your life. It kills the kidneys. It kills the liver. It helps in a different type of death. Herbs do not do that. So we have the situation for women, there's a lot of women in the room, of urinary tract infections. And people say, I took all of the prescription drugs for urinary tract infections, and it's getting worse and it's getting stronger common sense. You're taking something, it's kind of like if you had cockroaches in your kitchen, and I'm not trying to make an analogy between cockroaches and urinary tract infection, but if you use more and more stronger and stronger poison, the animal still lives, and it becomes immune to the poison. What is a yeast infection? What is a bacterial infection? This could be applied as well to very, very serious illnesses like HIV. We cannot kill our way out of the paradigm that we have in this world. So making more and more stronger drugs do not help. They find out that a lot of herbal medicine that is available actually works better than the prescription medicine for urinary tract infections. And what they say is, when you put that herbal medicine in there, it is not as strong, but it's really, really diverse in its activity, which means the simple organism cannot just learn how to beat the one thing. Drug, one thing. I learned how to beat it. Herbal medicine, very, very complex in its structure and how it works. So I love Ray and I love Holly Hill and I, I just want to go back to one thing that Ray said. I, 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 it's too late in the conversation to see if anybody remembers. Maybe you will. I'll just make the offer. Anybody notice what Ray said twice in his introduction? He said one phrase twice. And the phrase he said was, it takes a while. He said, the things that we have work but they take a while. The problem with our society is, I don't know any of you, but I consider you, not the problem, but I consider you the culturally creative. 
you are the people who want to learn. And when it comes down to it, we already in this room know that if we have an illness, it's going to take a while to heal it. Especially if we add our age into the situation and we add the situation of stress. So I thank you all for being here. I want to go into my presentation. I already have started it by saying the world of herbal medicine is the world's largest apothecary. So therefore, yeah, it is, I mean, Ray said, what would you take for sleeping? I would not, I would not recommend primarily an herb for sleeping. I would recommend L-tryptophan, which is an amino acid as your primary thing if you're having a hard time going to sleep. I love all the nutrition we have available to us, but the world's herbal apothecary is really incredible. So really the question is, how do we know uh, what to look for and how do we use it? And again, that's kind of what I want to talk about today. I also want to remind people that not all herbs are the same quality. So when you raise your hand and you said you took echinacea, I would say, where'd you buy your echinacea? And if you said, I bought it at Walgreens, then you probably really weren't even buying echinacea. And if you bought your product and you didn't know what type of echinacea to buy, then it probably didn't work for you as well. The thing about echinacea is you, you use it like gasoline. When you have a cold and flu at seven o'clock at night, you, you are at home and you cannot get in, a Holly Hill closes at nine. So it's gonna be 10 o'clock at night and you can't get into the store to get your herbs to get rid of the cold and flu that's coming on, then you're a little bit in trouble, which is why we recommend that you always fill up your medicine cabinet at home with things you know you're gonna need. And if you have that echinacea, you wanna douse your body with a lot of echinacea. And, and the thing about echinacea, whether you're taking a tablet or you're taking a capsule or you're taking a liquid, you should be able to bite the echinacea and you should get a tingling sensation on your tongue because the presence of that tingling sensation on your tongue is the presence of a chemical called isobulamides. And the isobulamides are there, that uh, enervating effect as it were, it is the thing that really gets the body to work real quickly. So uh, real quickly today I'm going to talk about your home medicine cabinet. I'm going to talk about three antivirals that everybody should have at home, one of the three. They should have olive leaf, they should have elderberry, and they should have echinacea, and that is in your notes. The reason you should have them is they're fantastic. But of the three of them, echinacea works the fastest. Now, is that because Michael believes that? No, because that's because that's the standard understanding of all herbalists. So what you want to do is you don't want to get your information from Google searches. You don't want to get your information from Sanjay Gupta on CNN. You don't want to get your information from the Consumer Reports person on WP uh, Channel 6. What you want to do is you want to come into a health food store and you want to get some information and use that as your starting point because you are responsible for your health, not the people who work in this store. They are your assistants. So what you want to do is say, okay, there are three antivirals. Which one do I want to buy? What's the active ingredient? How can I tell that it's going to work? So we'll come into that in a second. Let's look at the bigger picture because I can't do herbal medicine justice in, in one hour. The bigger picture is this, and this is why I put a second in my notes. Oh, <laughs> my notes are funny. The first thing I have is the mind. In Ayurvedic medicine, they say that it is really fear and the mind where all illness originate. So there is no reason we should ever separate the spiritual and the psychological and the mental attributes of what we're going through. Sometimes we want to be sick. Sometimes we feel like we're holding on just long enough so we can get sick. And sometimes we trick ourselves out because we feel like we cannot get sick right now. So the mind is more important than anything else. So when they start talking about the placebo effect, you say, thank God for the placebo effect. Other than that, in traditional Chinese medicine in Ayurveda, all health occurs in the middle burner. It occurs in this area right here. So we're looking at stomach acids, we're looking at bile, we're looking at nucleotides, we're looking at the Peyer's patch in the upper part of the small intestines. This is where all of the food gets digested. The word that I left out of that is the liver. The liver is critical in the digestive system. So it's all about gut and digestion. It's also about the circulatory system. So everybody talks about heart health as cardiovascular disease. What's the vascular in cardiovascular disease? It's the circulatory system. It's getting stuff from the heart, taking the good stuff from the heart, and then getting everything to go through the tissues and then bringing it back so it can be cleansed. So if you're looking to heal your body, it's holistic medicine. If you're looking to heal your body, it is, okay, I may have a problem that's involved with circulation, but 
I never thought I'd want to take a circulatory system formula, but actually I should be doing that because I know my circulatory system is not strong, and that's maybe why nutrients are not getting where I need them. So again, I like people to leave thinking big picture. Take a book, start to write things down, start to think about things. In addition, stress. Ray and I both agree. Stress is the ultimate killer. We can absolutely say that stress is a primary anti-inflammatory. So we talk about anti-inflammatories, and we take anti anything that says anti-inflammatories, we take and I say, bravo, good, continue to do it. Diversity in your anti-inflammatories. But if you're under a tremendous amount of stress, you have just as much anti-inflammatory breakdown of your body systems as you do if you're taking everything possible that you need, which means, again, mind-body, which means if you're under stress, go to bed early, turn off the TV, make sure you're taking a bath, go for a walk, look at nature, hug a tree, hug a friend, say nice things. And then we have the endocrine system. Now, I know one of the best endocrines in the world, in the United States at least, I apologize, in the United States, a good friend of mine. I love him, we talk very candidly about things. He's from Philadelphia, he doesn't live here, he doesn't live in Colorado now. And, and, he, and he admits, and he's really into natural medicine, that we have no idea what we're doing with endocrine system health. I mean, at the end of the day, we are very humble people. Scale of one to 10, we know as human beings, one. We're one, we know very little. But the beauty of herbal medicine is those plants were designed to have immune systems. Those plants have situations, again, start to study the circulatory system of a tree. That's really amazing. Plants have a circulatory system. We're pulling certain parts out of a plant, a sap, a resin. What are their purpose? Why are they in the plant? Again, my hope today is to inspire you not to buy a product, but to get really involved in your own health and to look at the planet we're living on. Georgetown University, College of Arts and Sciences. I went in uh, um, School of Foreign Service, Russian Area Studies major. At the, be at the beginning, I was going to stop the Cold War. But then I decided I wanted to be an author. I, I don't really have a scientific mind. But you know, where I went was, now everything I read is about natural sciences. What I read right now is about the world around me. You know, I hope to live the rest of my life studying this planet. It's just an amazing thing, and that's what I want you to be thinking about. The final thing is cellular health. So with cellular health, anytime that you are trying to figure something out, try to understand what it has to do with cellular health. The principal story I'll tell you today about cellular health is fats make up your cells. So omega-3s are probably the most important single nutrient you can take into your diet. So think about these one-ounce bottles here as tools. I want you to say, I understand that I want to have a toolbox, and in my toolbox I have these products. You're not coming in for medicine, and you're not coming in for a prescription. You're coming in for a plant that has chemicals in it, and those chemicals are food for your body. In addition, those chemicals can help your body to remember. So again, from Ayurvedic medicine, a 5,000 year old form of medicine, one of the most beautiful things I ever heard, they said, Plants do not heal you. Plants teach your body how to remember how to heal itself. There's great philosophical wisdom in that because our bodies know how to work. I don't think I put in, in, in this handout two favorite words I use, like to use in every one of my trainings, homeostasis and allostasis. Homeostasis is the word that we use when we say that we're getting our body back to a starting point. Homeostasis means that all of my body functions are working correctly. Homeostasis is high school biology. Homeostasis is, I know how the liver is supposed to work. I know how the heart is supposed to work. Homeostasis is getting back to the point that my heart works well, my circulatory system works well, my liver works well. That's beautiful. I'm going to guess nobody in this room is in homeostasis. But we would be going towards a point of getting to homeostasis by loving and caring for our own body and giving ourselves the appropriate nutrients. What is allostasis? Allostasis is a promise that is available to us all. It's why you're in a health food store. Allostasis means that my body is working well, homeostasis, but in addition, my body is working optimally. So the people we know who tr supposedly look for allostasis are people in sports, people who are raw foodists maybe, people who are devout nutritionists, but we find that most people don't know really the information that they should because 
How many times have you started to follow a fad and then realized there was a fad? Has it happened to anybody in the room here? It's happened to me. I mean, I've been doing this for 33 years. Herbs are tools. Herbs are tools that we should learn how to use. So I cannot fix my car. If you know how to fix your car, come be my friend, please. At the end of the day, I know herbal tools. And I know a lot. I, I can talk to doctors. I can talk to naturopathic doctors. I can talk to people who have, on a scale of one, with the herbs of their knowledge. So that is my, my ability to know toolbox. But today, it's really all about you're trying to get to know t t these tools. So why would you want to buy something in a one ounce bottle? So what I've done today is I've taken a favorite company. I love this company. They're called Alveda Tea. They're a really old company. And I've taken a few things that are in tea bag. And what I want to do is I want to talk to you about the different ways that you can buy herbs without knocking anything over, of course. So real quickly, I want to grab another company that I like. It's kind of like Alveda and Nature's Way were the grandpapas of all herbal companies in the United States. So when I got in this industry in 1981, these products were there. They were the link from the old medicine to the herbal renaissance. I love these companies. They're still owned by good people. I'm not making light of them at all. So what we have here is we have valerian root, we have horsetail, we have hawthorn, and we have burdock root. So two of the things I talked about were roots. So if anybody has ever bought valerian root, they're usually taking it to go to sleep. If anybody's ever bought burdock root, they're using it for their liver, they're using it as a cleanser, they're using it for acne. Do your research on roots and using roots. And there is no book that's out there that will not say, take the root, cut it up, and then boil it, slow boil for eight to 12 minutes. If you buy this, what do you do? You pour hot water on top of it, put honey or sugar in it, and then drink it. You're not paying attention to the herbalism. The herbalism is, is you're supposed to buy these products and then boil them for eight to 12 roots. Why? Because burdock root and valerian root have chemicals locked into the root. And the boiling is a water extract. Boiling is pulling the chemicals out of the root. It is a water extract, a hot water extract. That's why you don't boil it. You use a low boil of water. I have hawthorn berry, one of my favorite herbs. A gentleman was just in here saying his heart uh, was registering with a, a fast heartbeat. And he, he was asking me a question. And I said, hawthorn is an adaptogen. We're going to talk about adaptogens real quickly in a minute. Hawthorn is an adaptogen for the heart. It's not a true adaptogen, but it's an adaptogen for the heart. A lot of research, primarily in China, which is funny because you know, it was used a lot in European tradition, says that this is an adaptogenic heart herb, which means that if your heart is beating fast, it will slow it down in a nice way. And if your heart is moving a little slow, it'll pick it up. So as we get older and we have heart problems, wouldn't it make sense just to add hawthorn berry? Now this is a berry. Now a berry, you can boil. A berry you can make a tea out of. A berry would be better if you used it as a, as a low boil for a short period of time. And here's horsetail. Now horsetail is really important when you have horsetail because you, you want spring horsetail, which means when it grows, it looks like a horse's tail. And you want to get it at the very beginning of the spring, which means people can be selling you horsetail, which is harvested be, uh, too late in the harvest. If you get a, a mature horsetail, it is literally useless. What we're using horsetail often for is nature's source of silica. And silica is an herb which is fantastic. It's good if you're rebuilding muscle. It's good for your immune system. Silica is incredible. You have to get a ma mature springtime horsetail, which means you want to go out and harvest it and immediately preserve it. So what we have here is we have three herbs. And these three herbs, this is my clock. They have a little timer on them. Because unfortunately, every day, these are cut and sifted herbs. They're getting a little bit weaker. That's not bad. Again, the cost of this is lower. Someone may want a lower potency herb, but these herbs are getting weaker every day. There's two ways you can get herbs. You cut it up into little pieces, put it into a tea bag, or you can cut an herb up into little pieces and put it into a capsule. So here I have echinacea. This is echinacea herb. You can use echinacea herb as opposed to echinacea root, and you can cut it up into little pieces. But this echinacea herb is on my timer over here. It's getting a little bit weaker every day. There are things in echinacea herb that are really important. They're called polysaccharides. Poly meaning many, saccharides meaning sugars. 
If you take an herb and you dry it, you usually very quickly lose a lot of those polysaccharides. So therefore, old medicine, what I grew up in, what I gave people thousands of those bottles, is not the optimal way to do things. Here's astragalus root. Astragalus is the number one herb in the world that's an herb that you can take to strengthen your immune system. Get a lot of colds last year? Start taking astragalus in September. You know a person who has cancer and you want to give them something which is generally recognized as safe? Astragalus root. Astragalus is an herb that works with long time, slow, gradual, positive immune system support. I was fortunate, I studied under two women who were over 80 years old, who spent their, their Chinese, and they spent their entire life in China. One woman was the major medical doctor of the largest university hospital in Harbin, which is a city of 14 million people. She was the doctor in the hospital, and I studied under her for a year, and she didn't speak English that well, and I didn't speak Chinese at all, so I don't know if I learned anything. But what she used to tell me was, Here's the character for astragalus that's grown in the southern part of, the, of China. Here's, here's the character for the astragalus that's grown in the northern part on the sunny side. Here's the mark for astragalus that is grown at the base of the mountain. And what she said is, in Chinese medicine, we understand that where the plant grows has a different energetic. And it's a 2,000 year old system of very formal, principal medicine. And they say that uh, uh, a southern uh, top of the mountain astragalus has a different energy than a very, very cold climate astragalus root. Is that not common sense? I mean, I don't know if any of you are or ever were or your family were ever farmers, but these things make sense. This is a root. As a root, it should be boiled. You take this and you put it into your mouth. You get stomach acid. That's pretty intense, but it's not 180 degrees. It goes into your body. What's your body temperature? Hopefully your body temperature is about 98.6 degrees. Is that boiling? No. Then we have the time it's going through our colon, and as it goes further and further down, it actually gets a whole different energetic. So it's very hard to absorb a cut and sifted root herb in capsule. End of conversation. I hope I taught you something. Now the opposite of cut and sifted herbs is extracts. What is an extract? An extract is boiling your burdock for 8 to 12 minutes. That's a water extract. I'm a big fan of medicinal mushrooms. You carry a line here called Mushroom Science. They talk about medicinal mushrooms, they have to be a hot water extract. In traditional Chinese medicine, they said that the, that the, that the mushroom must be boiled as a tea or made into a soup. What is that? That's a water extract. If you make that echinacea tea bag, what is that? That is a water extract. Water extracts are great. In, Traditional Chinese medicine, they have water pills, which are, which are herbal teas made appropriately and then dried and put into little pellets. In Ayurvedic medicine, they know a way to make a water extract where they can pull a lot of the chemicals out of the plant. That's what's really important here is about pulling the chemicals out of the plant. For that burdock root or that um, whatever the other root that I just said was, I thought that valerian root. You, you, you want to know that you're getting the chemical out of the plant, and you, and you can do that by a hot long, hard water extract. The other way to do an extract is alcohol. So Herb Farm uses almost entirely alcohols, and what they're making is a liquid herb extract. So you can make a water liquid herb extract, you can make an alcohol liquid herb extract, you can make a glycerin liquid herb extract, you can make an alcohol liquid herb extract and then remove the alcohol and put in glycerin. And you can have a vinegar water extract. Why does this matter to you? Because I'm trying to explain to you there's different ways to pull the chemical out of the plant. And if you want the chemical medicine, if you want the herbal food medicine, you've got to figure a way to pull it out. So I'll use the example of calendula. Calendula is a very delicate herb. During World War I, they used calendula on the battlefield, and they, and they put it on wounds immediately from soldiers who had burns in any capacity or wounds. It was called calendula succus. And what they said is it has to be an absolute, fresh, immediate uh, calendula, which means you take it out of the ground and then you put it into an alcohol extract. You can also take calendula and you can dry it. When you dry the, uh, the calendula and then you put it into an extract, you get a different chemical property that's saved. So that's a very, very delicate chemical property. In, in the astragalus root, there is a polysaccharide, which is a very delicate uh, um, chemical property. In something like nettle, there are, there are a tense amount of minerals, and there are very delicate nutrients, and there are very deep nutrients. 
But if we look at something like uh, Turkish rhubarb, that has to be dried for a year in a certain climate before you have it. So if you look through Herb Farm's um, catalog, which Margaret has uh, right by the Herb Farm products here, and you look in the back, what's cool about Herb Farm is they will tell you what part of the plant is always used. And the word you'll see often near every raw, simple herb, you'll see either shade dried, or you'll see not, you won't see the word shade dried. Now, shade dried means that it sits outside, it gets sun, it gets proper moisture, it actually has, it goes to sleep at night once it's pulled from the plant, it gets a little bit of moisture on it, and then it goes through a slow drying process because it's sitting outside. There's a way that you can dry an herb where you put it in a climate, so Herb Farm has a, a drying room, which is probably twice the size of this room. And they use the drying room to dry different crops at different times. And when you dry it, it's all monitored, which means certain herbs have to have certain humidity during the drying period. Some herbs take two weeks to dry, some herbs take two months to dry, some herbs take a year to dry. Herbal medicine is very sophisticated. What we're looking for is we're looking to pull the chemical out of the product. So here we have the, the green bottle of Nature's Way, top, green top, and we have the purple, kind of purple, top. And this is turmeric and this is feverfew. What they're doing, this company is doing, is they are making a liquid extract and then they're drying it and putting it into a capsule. Cut and sifted herb, liquid extract, dry and put it into a capsule. What, what they're doing also here with the purple bottles is they're standardizing some active ingredient. Here we're standardizing valerylenic uh, acid. Here we're standardizing curcuminoids. And here, um, I'm not really sure what they're standardizing with fever few. Uh, Parthenolides is what the word is. Valerian you want to take when you go to sleep. Valerian is a nervy. And there are things in here that are strong. And when you standardize the active ingredient, you're standardizing by removal. So what you do is you make a liquid herb extract, and then you isolate a chemical compound that you believe is most important, and then you remove other things. You filter out other things. So by removal, you increase the capacity of the active ingredient. So valerian is a nervine and helps you go to sleep. The more you capture the actives that'll help you to sleep, the more nootropic things, the more possible it is that you're losing the things that are the nervines to strengthen the nervous system. We're totally obsessed with curcuminoids. This says it has a total amount of curcuminoids. NIH is studying the curcuminoids found in turmeric, which you can use as a spice, which you get in mustard, Philadelphia's favorite food, and what you get out of curries. Turmeric is an amazing herb. It's one of the most important herbs out there. It's a COX-2 inhibitor. It's an anti-inflammatory. It is not as good as fish oil. It is good for the liver. It has anti-cancer properties. Everyone thinks they know what the active is. You know what the active is? A well-grown turmeric plant, grown in rich soil, harvested at the right time, harvested the right way, where you find a whole plant extract and you leave it as such. When you say, I'm going to get all the curcuminoids, what are you doing? You're missing other parts of the plant that we may find three years later are actually the most important things. Again, if God intended all those nutrients to be there, you know, there are some things we pull out of plants, like we pull something out of comfrey, we pull something out of licorice, we know the things that are bad, but there are cofactors, just as within our body, with the B vitamins, we need certain things for certain chemical activities to go on, we need that to happen with the turmeric. I'll end here with my explanation of the different ways you can get herbs with feverfew. Feverfew is an incredible herb for headaches. This is a leaf, it's a standardized leaf. Leaves are usually easier for a body to break down, which means you don't need to have, you can make a, a tea of feverfew. Take this capsule when you have a headache. You know what's going to happen? You're going to get minimal response within 48, 45 minutes to two hours. And as you continue to take it, it's, the chemical's going to build up in your body, and two to, three day, two to three days later, you're going to say, wow, this thing's working. But you know what that means to me? It means you've had two days solid of really serious headaches. Now there are other things we can do for headaches. The beauty of liquid herb extracts is when you have a headache, you can take that fever few and the, that, the liquid herb extract goes directly into your bloodstream, which means you're gonna get a high percentage of the herb that you're taking very quickly into your body. So what I wanted to do there was explain to you the different ways that you can buy herbs. I don't wanna say that one is better than the other. I do wanna say that one is better than the other, but I want you to understand that there are different things that you're buying. 
unfortunately, we as consumers see the word golden seal and we think one thing. We see the word echinacea and we, and we think one thing. And then we think a bottle that says echinacea on it is the same as another bottle that says echinacea on it. It doesn't make sense. Take what you like. Do you like a fine car? Do you like a winning baseball team? Do you like good chocolate? What do you like? And you know, whatever you like, then you have to find something literally that makes sense, that you know, you have an ability to know why something is a little bit better. So why liquid herb extracts? Actually, I'm going to go back over this side because then I'll have to, I actually have a little bit of space there with you. I apologize. Why liquid herb extracts? I have eight reasons why liquid herb extracts. Again, this is to teach you whether you think with some herbs you want to take liquid herb extracts. First of all, with liquid herb extracts, you get superior bioavailability. Now, these are liquid alcohol extracts. When you put a liquid alcohol extract into your mouth, your mucosa is very, very receptive. It disappears very quickly into your body. We would call this almost like a colloidal uh, solution. What did I want to show you here? I did have an order here. I may have lost it already. Okay, it doesn't matter. You shake this up. When you shake this up, the chemical activity of the extractive is equally dispersed throughout the liquid. You take the liquid, you put it into a little bit of juice, you put it in apple juice, you can put it directly into your mouth. What happens is the chemicals that are found in the alcohol go directly through your mucosa into your bloodstream. Now the opposite of a capsule, with a capsule you swallow it again through the stomach acids, up through the pyrus patch, goes through the intestinal tract, goes through first liver bypass, which means everything that you take in has to go through the liver and be filtered through the liver, then goes into the bloodstream, then goes through the body, which is the, the delay we get with the fever few. That being said, when you have a chemical that's available, when you take a pill, less of that chemical is available by the time it goes through the liver and comes back through your body. With a liquid herb extract, it goes directly through the mucosa into your bloodstream. Sorry, liver, this was such a small chemical that my liver did not have to take care of it. It actually absorbed directly into the body. That's an incredible ease of use. So if you're taking echinacea and you have a cold coming on, that echinacea is going to start working chemically in your body in about a half hour, 20 minutes to a half hour, which is something you want. If you're a woman and you have hot flashes and you know that there's some, an herb that works for you, you don't want to wait two and a half days. You want to have that product help to relieve in some capacity, on some level, those hot flashes right away. Again, with headaches. If you have a stomach upset, you don't want to wait for a while. I was looking for the ginger there, and I'm not going to worry about it. Ginger is a root. If you want to have good, high-quality ginger right away, you're better off, in a way, taking ginger root beer, if it's really, truly ginger root beer with ginger in it, with an effervescent from, from the ginger, than to take a pill in some capacity. Again, quality of herb does matter, but a liquid herb extract will work better. So superior uh, uh, bioavailability, and what leads from superior bio, bio, bioavailability, but which, which is not parcel, part parcel of that, long day for me, is enhanced absorption. So you would get superior bioavailability and enhanced absorption. In addition, you get the fresh herb option. So with Herb, herb Farm, we have a farm that's two miles away from our manufacturing facility which means that for the herbs where appropriate, we harvest the herb in the morning, and then we, um, and then we have the herb ready to make into an extract. Uh, excellent, thank you, Margaret. We, ha we have um, an herb uh, ready to make into an extract that day. Uh, herb Farm has about 50 herbs that are fresh herb extracts. Why do they have 50 herbs that are fresh herb extracts? Because the science says that if you get that herb right out of the field, you're going to have it. If you can harvest your horse tail that morning and put it into an extract that afternoon, you've captured tons of silica. Make sense? If you have oat seed, which is one of the best herbs for reju rejuvenating a, de a depleted central nervous system. If you have oats, and again, we eat oatmeal, which is the mature oat, which has already passed its prime. If you take that milky oat seed at the very beginning of harvest and you get it that day and you put it into an extract it is infinitely better than when you buy dried herb from somebody and it's shipped to you and you get it three months later and you don't know how long it was dried quality of herb does matter in addition you get dosage flexibility 
So if you wanted to give an herb to somebody and you had a bottle of echinacea at home, you say, here's a capsule. Well, here's a really thin 12-year-old child. And here's an 85-year-old great-grandmother. What dosage do I give them? I have a person in my family who has allergies. And I give them a standard, a super high potency standardized herbal extract. How am I going to know they're not going to have an allergic response? The beauty of liquid herb extracts is you can take a little dose. And the beauty of liquid herb extracts is you can monitor and control your doses. And again, for old, for the older population, it's a good way to go into herbs, trying them slowly because a good herb will work well. You also have the benefit of the herbs taste. So, has anybody ever here ever tasted a liquid herb extract? because I think that we're going to let everybody at the end of this do rhodiola, if that's okay with uh, Margaret. I think we have water back there. So here is your rhodiola, and in front of you all, I'm going to have a nice shot of one of my favorite herbs. I want to hold this up, and I'm sure none of you can see it, but rhodiola looks almost like a rose. If you can't see this, it's a beautiful, beautiful rose color. Rhodiola is an arctic rose, and as I'm standing here, I'll take 30 drops, which I never do. I just take the, the batch and put it in. It's a beautiful arctic rose, just like with Eleutherococcus senecoccus or Siberian ginseng. We found that the reindeer during the winter, when there was 28 feet of snow, they would spend the entire day going to one root, and they would dig like their life depended on it, and they would pull up that root, and they would gnaw on that root and eat the whole thing. Because the reindeer knew something. They're more attuned in the nature than we are. They knew that to live, they needed to eat that, that uh, uh, Siberian ginseng. The same thing occurs with rhodiola, which is an arctic rose, which means it grows above the arctic circle. So right now, Irfar is working with some people who are looking to grow rhodiola in Alaska. But regardless of where you're getting it from, it's a beautiful color. Color can tell you what an herb is like. So if you look at other companies who sell liquid herb extracts, and I want to say today, on camera, that there are about 12 liquid herb extract companies in the United States, and they are all noble and fine because it's really easy to buy herbs and put them in capsule. You can start your own company tomorrow, have some herbs shipped to a, a contract manufacturer and put herbs in capsules. But to get a really high quality herb is a love and a devotion, and the companies that make liquid herb extracts really do care about what they're doing. So you saw the color, and this is a beautiful taste. So some people spend $500 on wine or, or a beer. I made us spend $500 on wine. This is the flavor of a rose and you can taste it. So cheers to you and we'll try it afterwards. If you had the echinacea, you would get a tingling sensation in your mouth. Uh, the elderberry tastes like beautiful elderberry. So we have an elderberry glycerite right here, which is delicious on, on vanilla ice cream. It's like, uh, it's like a fruity berry uh, uh, elderberry on, actually it's used as elderberry in Scandinavian countries as a fruit, you know, and something like a lingonberry, etc. So again, Berries taste like berries. Now, has anybody ever here tasted an herb that they didn't like because it was maybe bitter? Has anybody ever put a bitter herb into their mouth and they said, I'm never going to do that again? The truth of the, <laughs> the, truth of the matter is, is that bitters are critically important. The truth of the matter is, I will stand here today and say to you that the way the body works and what we know about the body right now, the more bitters you ingest, the higher the probability relative to the placebo, which is you simultaneously as your avatar, which does not exist. If you take in more bitters, you have a lower propensity of having cancer than the person who does not take in the bitters. And why is that? Because bitters cause a response. So again, I'm going to pretend like I'm taking some bitters right now, and my face is going to go, ew, ew, that's horrible. And what happens when you take in a bitter cellularly is your cells do the same thing, which means bitters actually cause a cell to have an energetic response, an expansion and a contraction. So we're made up of cells, and when you take in bitters, what happens is you're exercising your cells. And when your cells move, you're pushing out toxins. So bitters are fantastic for, I think with my time, we'll just do that uh, afterwards. Uh, oh, good, thank you. Thank you, Margaret, thank you, Ray. So this is a digestive bitters uh, formula. It's the best digestive, best flavored digestive bitter formula on the market, which is very therapeutic. When you take this, you're gonna go, wow, that's powerful. Now, people from the Caribbean, people from China and Asia, they all have bitters in their diets. And most of us in the United States eat two foods, and we know what they are. The foods we eat are sweet and salty. So you go to the restaurant, you have your Splenda, and you have your modified sugar, 
and maybe you have your sukhana, and then you have your salt. Uh, again, the amazing story of peppers is something I'm writing on right now, but bitter is an amazing flavor. When you take in bitter and it hits your tongue, no matter how you take it or when you take it, what happens is bitter on tongue signals brain. Brain goes bitter on tongue. Brain goes bitter on tongue. Let's turn on hydrochloric acid. Let's get the stomach acid shower ready for the food that we're eating. Let's turn on bile production. Bitters, by definition, help with digestive system health, which is why all of the European tradition had herbal bitters with the monks used to make the bitters, and then people used to take the bitters before the meal because they were on a high venison, high wild game, low vegetable, low roughage diet. So bitters are fantastic for digestion. Everyone who has digestive system problems should look at a bitter formula as a basis with a little bit of it right before the meals they eat. If you have a person at home who's losing their appetite because of illness or because of age, convince them to take a little bit of bitters and they will and their, their appetite will return. So again, with an herb, liquid herb extract, you can taste the herb. You take something in a tea, you can taste the herb. You take something in a capsule, we are so convenience oriented. Let's take the capsule because I brought the thing that says the word on the label and I think it's gonna work for me, maybe. When you take the herb and you taste it, it's incredible. This 81-year-old Chinese medical doctor, this woman said to me, she said, Ramania is the best herb for women for keeping menstrual cycles going regularly. And she said, when you take in Ramania as a woman, as a tea, and you taste it, you will start to crave the flavor when you need it. She said that you will start to recognize flavors in your brain and in your immune system and you will start to like the flavor. Anybody here ever drank a real aloe vera? They have aloe life aloe vera out here. It is an amazing flavor. It is sour, salty, bitter. Everyone says aloe vera is bitty, bitter. Look at Ayurvedic medicine. It says that aloe vera should be sour, salty, and bitter. It's not salt, it's a plant salt. You taste these things and you go, wow, I don't know if I like that. If you eat a lot of vegetables, you kind of like it. If you're really toxic in some way, whatever, however you know you're toxic, I don't know whether you're toxic, you're gonna hate it at the beginning. And what's gonna happen if you drink it every day, you're gonna to start to crave the flavor. So there is a brain-mind connection and it is really important. And the flavors do matter and bitters do matter. And when you actually wanna to touch the herb and be one with the herb, you can taste it as a liquid herb extract. In addition with the herbs, you have topical application. If you had a a skin cancer, put turmeric directly on your skin cancer. And I'm not saying that, herbalists are not saying that. You know, modern Western doctors are saying that. If you have varicose veins, take the herbs that are good for varicose veins and put them on your varicose veins. Herbs can be used topically. And a liquid herb extract, what's gonna happen is that alcohol is gonna have transdermal absorption. It's gonna carry the chemicals right below uh, the, the surface of the skin. Like when you take the herbs in the mouth, you have transdermal absorption, which increases absorption and bioavailability. You also have an ease of use. If you go out to my car right now, you'll probably find five of these herbs in the little packet, like right where you, people have their, you know, their cigarettes or their coffee cup. I got my herbs all sitting in there. And finally, you have long shelf life. So the alcohol is used as a preservant. And again, I think I mentioned my mom already today, so I'll mention my dad who's deceased, and it's always good to remember your family. When my dad died, we had a bar down in the basement. And all the, all the whiskey that my dad had for his friends, his, you know, his war buddies, who are all also dead, that whiskey's been sitting there for 10 years. That whiskey is still powerful medicine. Alcohol has a really long shelf life. If you buy an herb that is in an alcohol base, almost definitely if it was made correctly it will have six to eight years as a shelf life so therefore when you buy your herb and you have a little bottle like this in your medicine cabinet and everybody has all their beauty things let's just put a little bit of the herbs in the herbal medicine cabinet those things are good for a long period of time but let's just say that you bought some of your herbs cold and flu season last year and you haven't used them yet so what did i mention i mentioned olive leaf i mentioned uh elderberry and i mentioned echinacea a talk on allergies that we had last week on the radio, I was talking about how effective echinacea is during this time of year. Because we always think of an herb as having one use. What do you think about echinacea? You think it's good for stimulating the immune system in the short term. Yes, it is. Find a good quality echinacea. Echinacea is also a powerful, powerful anti-inflammatory. So therefore, anytime you have an anti-inflammatory disposition, echinacea is good to take. And also, echinacea is called an alterative. These are in your notes. 
An alterative is what we call a blood cleanser. But what an alterative is, it is an herb which alters your digestive system and the absorption of nutrients. An alterative is something that helps with better digestion of nutrients, and it actually changes the chemical structure of the blood by increasing absorption. So a blood cleanser, we call it alterative, alters the body, alters the chemical nature of the blood, helps to alter how the lymphatic system works. So blood cleansers are good. Usually they're bitters. If they have a bitter component, they're going to work with the lymphatic system to clean out the endocrine system. So echinacea is good for dieting. Echinacea is good for allergy season, anti-inflammatory, a detoxifier. If a person is a, has a toxic nature, echinacea can be used as part of a cleansing program because it stimulates the immune system in the short term and it's anti-inflammatory. So therefore, echinacea is not just for November to January. Olive leaf. Multitasking herb. Does anybody in the audience know what olive leaf's second primary activity is? It's used for high blood pressure. So olive leaf is fantastic for heart health. So as I tell the people who work in the store, you know, if someone comes in and, and you say they need something for cold and flu, we're looking at three powerful antivirals. Three powerful antivirals. Echinacea. It's good as an anti-inflammatory. It's good as a as an alterative, and it's good for stimulating the immune system. We have olive leaf, which is good for nervous system. It's good for nervousness and jitteriness. It's good for high blood pressure. So the person goes, oh man, I got a cold. What am I going to get them? I'm going to get them olive leaf. Not that I know what I'm doing, but there's a higher probability that's the right herb. The person goes, oh, I'm cold. I'm going to give them echinacea because basically it's something that's going to help cleanse their body just a little bit. And the third one is elderberry. So if somebody comes in and they're wasting away and they're thin and they have really, really their skin is, is dry and their hands are cold and they're nutritively deficient. I'm going to give them elderberry. So what I want you to think about is we don't buy herbs for the season. We buy herbs to understand what they're good for. Do you think that any one of you does not have a virus in you right now? The question is, is the glass half full or half empty? Because we're always dealing with viral load. So therefore, there's nothing negative. You know, if we go through a cold spell followed by a warm spell, if we have, you know, three rainy days followed by really, really humid days and then really hot days, that's killer to our immune system. Take echinacea because what you're doing is you don't want to have the virus take hold and be there. So that's uh, turning the page to the next page. And on the second page, what I wanted to say is adaptogens. So I'm going to conclude with my favorite herbs. My favorite herbs are adaptogens. The word adaptogen was coined after World War II by Russian herbalists. And what the Russian herbalist said was, People are coming back from World War II, and the Russians really took it hard in World War II, and so did we, but a lot of people went back to their homes in Russia, and they had a hard time. They had post-traumatic stress disorder. And the Russian government said, what are we going to do about it? And they said, let's look at the herbal uh, folk medicine tradition and see what we can use. And they said, what are the reindeer doing? Why are the reindeer taking those roots? They said, this is an interesting herb. Let's look into it. And they coined the word adaptogen. And what the word adaptogen means is the ability of your body to adapt to outside stressors. What an adaptogen means is if my cousin comes over and talks to me all the time and gets on my nerves, and if I know that I'm not going to be eating really well, and my body's going through a temporary stress, that the adaptogen is going to help me to work with that. An adaptogen means that if you're going through a chemotherapy or you're going through, a, if you're getting you know, your teeth taken out, if you have any of these traumatic, intense things, that adaptogen is going to help you to deal with something that you did not know what the problem was, but it's a problem. It's your, the ability of your body to adapt to outside stress. Adaptogens are always non-specific. There are 22 of them that are recognized. Eleutheroseptococcus, it was the first. It used to be called Siberian ginseng. The, the 22 of them which are in your list are non-specific, which means that they are safe and they do not work for one thing. Non-specific means they work for many things. Uh, adaptogens are always antioxidant. And they are always supportive. So I am a big proselytizer of the words daily herbs. I would like you to say, I want to get herbs in my diet every day. So have spearmint tea and take tea after dinner. Find relaxing teas like chamomile and peppermint and take them after dinner. And then say, there are herbs that I want to do seasonally. So I want to start building up my immune system in <coughs> August for October. And I want to start working on my digestive system in October for the onslaught of Thanksgiving through the holiday season. 
start to think about what your body needs and give, the, give your body the herbs which will help your body to remember how to get back to homeostasis. And if you, if you, if you get a little scared at first, take the adaptogens because the adaptogens will give you energy, the adaptogens will help you to deal with stress, the adaptogens will strengthen your immune system, and again, you can take the adaptogens in high dosages and there is no recognized contraindication. Doesn't that sound incredible? So I turned to my government, I live in Washington, D.C., and I said, thanks for spending more money than ever existed in the world on the military and on the manufacture of pharmaceutical drugs. Thanks for spending my money. Why don't you spend a little bit of time studying adaptogens? We say we have a war on drugs. We say we have a war on cancer. We say we're going to run every weekend for some cause. But is any of that money being spent on studying things that are absolutely known by really smart people to have positive effects? And there would, there, would there ever be a reason for us to stop growing genetically modified soybeans and rather maybe just give, you know, 20,000 acres to growing rhodiola. Uh, Earth Farm just did a harvest. Earth Farm is a grower, and it's amazing how much you can get out of one field, one acre. It's amazing how much medicine you can get out of one acre. We have everything backwards in our lives. You know what's going to happen is when more and more people say, I can't pay a, t a $30 copay to pay a $10 copay to buy a $10 copay to go and say, okay, I, you told me to take it. What do you mean this prescription is $365 for one week? When we get sick of that, you know what we're going to do? We're going to turn to the health food store. And we're going to say, wow, you know, I can get over my urinary tract infection. Wow, I can keep my immune system strong. Wow, I can take herbs that make me feel good. So adaptogens are incredible. Let's just look at the adaptogens. I want to give them the honor of saying their names out loud. So it says in bold adaptogens. You don't have to read along with me. I'll say it. Eleutherococcus senecoccus, found primarily in very cold areas of Russia, Manchuria, and, um, and northern Japan. Uh, ashwagandha, which is uh, the, one of the primary herbs in Ayurvedic medicine. We have so many great herbs now in the last decade. I will say only once, thank you, Dr. Oz. And that is thank you, Dr. Oz, for mentioning all these herbs from India. That's the only good thing he has done in my mind. And he's a really good guy, and he saved my, one of my best friend's sister's lives. But I mean, he's doing more harm than he's doing good. Oz giveth and Oz taketh away. Dr. Oz said the kava <laughs> might be dangerous because when you get to this point, like Dr. Wilde did too, you, everybody trusts you so much and you're so afraid to say anything that you, you are painted into the corner. Kava is one of the most amazing herbs of the world. It is fantastic for anxiety. If you have questions about it, it's fantastic for somebody relaxing. It's fantastic for muscle spasms. And Oz says one thing and the markets crash. That's really stupid power for a person who doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's fed this information to say during a program. He reads a little script, does a Google search, and goes out there and talks about something. So please try to get people not to get all excited about Oz. He brings really good things up. Health food stores have lived off them for two years, but health food stores also know that some of the things he talks about are really not full holistic medicine. Holy basil, also an herb from India. Again, holy basil is good for the lungs. Holy basil is an energizer. In Ayurvedic medicine, they say holy basil is good as an herb for a person who cannot accept love. Do you have somebody in your life you know who cannot accept love, who's very, very closed like this? They could probably use an adaptogen to help them in, on a, a spiritual level. Rhodiola, which we just talked about, is the Arctic Rose. It's used a lot by X, uh, X game athletes. It's, it's something if somebody's looking for energy, it's fantastic. There's a lot of research on Rhodiola for memory and for doing tests and exams. Panax ginseng and American ginseng, Asian ginseng, or Chinese ginseng, Asian ginseng. It's, it's my favorite adaptogen. If ever you want to give me something for my birthday, I'll tell you the date. And you can give me the address and you can send me some ginseng. Rishi mushroom is a mushroom, so it really shouldn't be in this list, but it must be a hot water extract. Now, Rishi mushroom is an anti-inflammatory. Rishi mushroom is good for the lungs. Rishi mushroom is good that you can take every day as an adaptogen is. Shizandra is, uh, is the secret wonderful herb. It's called five flavors in traditional Chinese medicine because it says it gets into all nutritive channels because your body sees all five of the elemental flavors, which is very, very rare. Shizandra berry is very good for the liver, and Shizandra berry is very good for the eyes. 
Suma is the adaptogen from South America. It's the first one that we recognize. Astragalus is the adaptogen, which is good for strengthening the immune system long term. Shadavari is called Indian ginseng. It's from the asparagus <coughs> flavor, a family. Yeah. So when you taste Herb Farms Shadavari, you know what it tastes like? What's it supposed to taste like? Asparagus. Shadavari is good for women's energy. It is good for women for their urinary tract at every stage of their life. It'll tonify their urinary tract. For women who just gave birth, Shadavari is a safe and effective amenagogue, which means it's going to help produce breast milk, and it's also good for energy. Uh, Shadavari is good for hot flashes with women. Shadavari is incredible for women. Shadavari can be taken by men who have prostate issues. Shadavari can be taken by men who are looking to take a cooling adaptogen. Gaduchi is an unknown Indian Ayurvedic, it's, it's, it's the echinacea of India, if you want to say that. And then licorice is an herb which is adaptogenic. You take in small amounts, it's usually put in the formulas. So I'm going to finish. I just want you to go back to page one. And I want to point out to a formula called Eye Health. So you'll see it on the left-hand side, it says eye health. It has bilberry fruit, it has lyceum berry, chrysanthemum flower, shazander berry, and ginkgo leaf. This is one of my favorite herbal medicines. Um, and um, what I want to say is quality bilberry fruit is really important. Lyceum berry, chrysanthemum uh, flower come from China, so you want to make sure you're getting good quality product. And again, the benefit of shazander berry. And the last thing I'll say, is stress manager, which is on the other side, near the end, it says stress manager. Stress manager is a classic adaptogenic formula. It has eleuthero, reishi, holy basil, rhodiola, and schizandra. So cleverly, I wrote down the words at the, at the end of this handout, which I hope you take home and look at at least once, and I said the words at the beginning that I wrote down at the end. This is not about liquid herb extracts. I'm here to talk if anybody has questions afterwards. This is about you. I honor you for being here. I hope that I gave you a way to be more aware of trying to understand that quality herbs help you to, to work better. So if you're looking for something, I hate to say this, but the difference in price between a quality herb and a poor quality herb is negligible, if not at all. Because the American consumer says, I want to buy something, I read it in a book, let me go buy a bottle that says something on it and I'll buy it. So the prices are almost identical. So therefore, you don't have to worry, worry about anything. I thank you all for being here. I am here for an extended question and answer. If people have to leave, thank you very much. You do have to get back. We are 30% off the entire line. Starting there. Uh, through what? I, I forget when. Well, through the rest of the month. Right? OK, through the rest Starts of the month. Now. So you got the whole line at 30% off. The people in the store can help. I'll do questions and answers. So if people want to ask me questions one-on-one, -on -one, please wait for a second. Margaret, did you want to ask a question or say something? Um, just one point, an amenagog herb is actually an herb that helps bring on menstruation. I said and, the wrong thing. And traditionally, yes. amenagogs <laughs> are, are avoided, avoided during pregnancy. Right, it's not amenagog. They, they can actually cause a miscarriage. Correct, and I used the wrong word. I have a lack of God. I apologize. That's why I love Margaret. Now, been, a, <laughs> been a long day. Other question. Um, when you are running uh, uh, an uh, antibiotic, there are antibiotic herbs on Okay, you shouldn't be taking uh, your acidophilus or probiotics with it. Now, uh, what herbs would you say would be a problem like that? I know garlic is. You should take garlic and then take your uh, probiotic with it. Are there other herbs that you would suggest? That, uh, well, I, I, again, uh, with probiotics, I work with a company called Dr. Here's, which is an incredible probiotic that you have out in your store. I think it's one of the best probiotics, plant-based probiotic. Um, uh, what you want to do is you want to get the bacteria into your gut at a certain period of time. So we'll use garlic and, uh, and, um, and uh, are you asking the question about probiotic or antibiotic, right? Well, both in a sense. Okay. In other words, if you're on an antibiotic, you should Correct. take a, right. a probiotic at the same time. It's going to kill it, obviously. Yeah. So what I'm saying is there are herbs that do the similar thing. Yeah. You've got to be careful with herbs and take them a couple hours later. Correct. I think that the second point is what, what Ray wants to get there. So what you want to do, realize that there's a there's an absorption factor and there's a transit time with everything you take, which is why often people say to you to take your pharmaceutical drug and then take the herbs a distance if they believe in herbs. And the same thing is going to happen with the probiotics. So I would say with garlic or with uh, something like golden seal, which is an astringent herb that would be a concern, it's really just separating them by two to three hours which means basically it's like the Philadelphia L going along. And if you have that L and you take the probiotic, 
by the time it gets into the body, it's going to settle in. Now, the second thing that Ray's talking about is that if you take something powerful, it will kill off the probiotic you put in your body. Um, while that's true, if you took the, sh and I know some very powerful uh, oregano oil, uh, garlic, if you have those things, they will kill off some of the probiotic, but I would, I, I would actually have to massage that idea a little bit we take in a lot of probiotic, and most of it just circles through the middle of the intestinal tract, and we defecate it out. So we always are losing probiotic. Probiotic is, disappears out of our body every day because of elimination. Our whole intestinal tract sloths off. So if you imagine a tunnel, and inside that tunnel we have hair, and inside that hair we have mucus and other things, and inside that we have fats going on, we have eicosanoids, we have nucleotides, all of this activity going on, and there's bacteria present. A lot of that bacteria is moving through your body every day. So years ago, we used to say, take a probiotic and just take it for a short period of time after you had antibiotics. Now we realize that probiotics are, are being lost every day. In addition, we take high amounts of probiotics and we are really wasting them. So what you're looking at is you're looking for a probiotic that colonizes the gut. And when a probiotic colonizes the gut, it means it settles in, usually to a sticky, sticky substance along the wall. So if you took an antibiotic, which will flush out and kill out a lot of things, if you took garlic, if you took oregano oil, if you took golden seal, it is going to push things out, but probiotics will remain. So it's, a, it's kind of a misconception that we believe that if you take an antibiotic, all of a sudden you have a sterile uh, colon, you have a sterile gut. There's always going, we would die unless we had a presence of probiotics. So the, so, so the worry is when you take an antibiotic, it's killing a lot of these bacteria, yes. If you take a probiotic, if you take oregano oil, which is very, very harsh, if you take golden seal, which is an antiseptic, and anything that would be an antiseptic in some capacity would do this. If you took uva ursi, if you, if you took, um, uh, what else did I just say? Uh, oregano oil, golden seal, and garlic. If you took any one of those, they are going to kill stuff off. But I would say to you, Ray, that the answer to that is is to just make sure that you're taking probiotics regularly, daily, because you're replenishing it. You, so here's the, here's the L, and you had some probiotics here, and some of it stayed, and a lot of it kept on going. The stuff that stayed, along comes the antibiotic. It's going to kill a lot of that. Along comes the garlic. It's going to kill a lot of that. But there's going to be some that remains. That's just a fact. And then the next train that comes along is going to give you some more probiotic, and we're going to do it all over again. So the truth of the matter is we are in a situation with our guts that we're taking really, really strong things for a reason that it will kill off good, as we call it, flora and fauna. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, the, the digestive bitters, just one thing. I think it says to take a half hour before a meal. Yes. Uh, a lot of people are going to forget that. I mean, it's still going to be effective if you take it just before a meal, correct? Yes. As a matter of fact, digestive bitters are good if there's an immune system, I mean, if there's an enzyme problem in the body. Digestive bitters are good if there's an allergic system in the body because what the digestive bitters are going to do, just like we take enzyme therapy between meals, because the enzyme therapy will break down metabolic waste, digestive enzymes will help to break things down in the body. They will help our digestive system, so it can be taken at any time. There's a benefit for, if you look at every major herbal formula that ever existed in any medicine that we know for cancer, every one of those herbal formulas had primarily digestive bitters. So digestive bitters daily between meals are going to have a benefit at, at cellular reactivity. They're going to have an effect at, at lymphatic cleansing. But if you take the digestive bitter 20 minutes before a meal, it's going, to, it's going to bitter on tongue. So again, if you took a digestive bitter capsule, nothing would happen. Do you understand? I hope you learned something today. If you take the capsule, nothing's going to happen. Bitter on tongue signals the brain, turns on hydrochloric acid, turns on bile. All good. If you want to absorb minerals, women, we are taking cheaper calcium often men we should be taking calcium end of conversation calcium and magnesium are very very important but most of the mineral we take is not absorbed minerals are very hard to absorb so when you take a bitter it turns on hydrochloric acid years ago doctors used to tell older people to go into a health food store and buy hydrochloric acid pills the reason they were doing that is as we get older the amount of hydrochloric acid in our stomach goes down so when you take a bitter, it temporarily heightens the availability of your own body to make its own hydrochloric acid, which is a good thing. 
because that hydrochloric acid will break down the food you eat to get the minerals out of the food. It'll help you with the absorption of the mineral pill that you take, like the calcium and magnesium. That bitter will also turn on hydrochloric acid, which will help you to break down proteins. So if you're a jock or you know a person who takes in a lot of protein because you like meat or you take nutritional supplements, Bitters are good. Take a bitter before you take that high protein food because what it's going to do is it's going to turn on the hydrochloric acid which is going to take those long string of uh, peptide clusters and it's going to break them down into pi tripeptides and bipeptides in our stomach because the stomach acid is doing that and then when it gets into the upper part of the intestinal tract your body's going to be able to absorb it more. So it's all about this stomach acid breaking things down, primarily minerals and proteins. Bitters help with that. Does that answer your question twice? <laughs> good. Beautiful. Uh, questions? We have the bitters up here. Again, the beauty of this is the ease of use. The question is how much should you start with? And again, you may find that you're repulsed by bitters and you might find in a month that you would like it. Uh, that being said, you may find that you have a slow transit time, which means from the time you eat to the time that you have to use the restroom is very, very slow. You can do a higher dose. You may find you have a very quick transit time which means that when you eat something, you have to go to the bathroom right after that. So again, think about that in some way. Again, you can use a low dosage, and again, there's nothing wrong with using a higher dosage because this is not, this is just, the food components in there are all safe, and again, you can take this product which has secondary effects. So I would say with Herb Farm, <laughs> yes. Well, I would take it a half hour before I eat my largest meal at least. So I would take it once a day before my largest meal. And again, somebody could decide to do more. So the dosage range we have on these are usually 30 to 45 drops with a meal once or twice a day. And they're very specific about how many times a day to take it. So if it says uh, 30, 40 drops one to two times a day, and, or if it says four to five times a day, you can get the range that the four to five times a day is obviously something you can take more, more often. And if it says one to tw two times a day, then you should probably take it a little bit less. But again, then we get into the whole field of herbalism, and I would not want to say every herb has its own story. This is why you come to Holly Hill. They can give you some direction as to what herbs will be worrisome or not. The bitters formula, once or twice with your largest meals or with your protein meals during the course of the day. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Nothing here needs to be refrigerated. Again, it's got an eight to 12 year shelf life. Okay, so we were talking about liquid herb extracts, and I told you all about the world of herbalism, many different herbs, and again, a lot of herbs on the table, and again, they're on sale for the rest of the month. Thank you for having me, Holly Hill. Have a good evening. Thank you.